into Bradford. Into Bradford. This is BCB News 106.6 FM. And we're going to be looking at a new book from the award-winning Yorkshire author's thrilling new short story collection. Yorkshire-born author Ray Clark's new short story collection, A Devil's Dozen, published by Double Dragon of Canada, has now been released. And I can have a chat now with Ray Clark, the author. Hello, Ray. Hello, Judith. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So are you Yorkshire-born and bred, are you? Where are you from? Originally Hull. Um, I don't oh, know now, but, uh, yeah, originally in Hull. Yeah, whereabouts? I have a lot of connections with Hull. <laughs> really? Sutton. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> but you've got over it now. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's probably one of the stories somewhere. <laughs> okay, so you've um, you've been writing it says, uh, since about the 1990s, mm -hmm. early 1990s. Yeah. And um, you had some work published by the British Fantasy Society, I see. Is a lot of your work fantasy? Would you put it in that category, or, or do you sort of move around different different genre? I do tend to move around a lot. I mean, I started in horror, and yeah. that has always been sort of close to my heart, because I grew up watching the, you know, the Hammer horror films and the Universal films. Yeah. So that's something that's close to me. But I have moved around recently and more into crime. So, um, yeah, I do tend to move around a lot. Right, OK. So do you want to tell us about the um, your, your new your new uh, publication, then? A Devil's Dozen, yeah. yeah. Um, it started off basically from other people, really. When you do an author class, when you take the classes, one of the things you concentrate on are short stories because they're quick and easy to write. And if you go to author talks, people there kept mentioning short story collections. Mm. But the publishers always tend to have a different view. They say that they don't do them because they don't sell. Okay. And I found that happened with my American publisher, Damnation Books, who mm. did the Priest's Hall. They said the same thing. The Canadian publishers did say that initially, but still wanted to have a look at it. And once they'd seen it, they said, well, this is different. We, we like the idea, so we're going to go with it. So I was quite lucky there. Okay, okay. Well, give, give us an example of one of the short stories, just the kind of, the theme. Not a spoiler, obviously, but the, the kind of theme. I think the theme goes a lot along myths and legends. That's what right. we tend to be looking okay. at, uh, folklore. And, you know, you, you read something in folklore and then you try and give it a, an alternative twist. And that's what we've done, really. I mean, one particular story called The Born Collector is about a childhood nightmare that returns in later life to prove that there's more to folklore than meets the eye, which I think is the only one that's probably set in Yorkshire. OK. Right. Oh, I see. So you, you, you need to have some to hold your hand, do you, when, you re when you're reading it? Uh, that has been said before, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and what got you into writing then, Ray? What, what kicked it all off? I think it, it was the... F it kind of happened at school. Um, mm -hmm. When you know, when you're studying for your O levels, there was um, an English exam where you had to submit six pieces, uh, six stories, and the teachers kept saying that I had a vivid imagination. And I, I remember writing this this one story that is actually the first one in the collection called One Rainy Night, which I started at school but never ever finished. Yeah. And later in life, obviously much later in life, I went back to the story and finished it. And this actually starts the collection off, which basically is about an act of violence at a deserted country station that seems to have grave consequences for everybody, which results in an eternal curse. So the curse goes on right through generations. Right. Oh, crikey. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, fabulous stuff. OK, I see you do... Um uh, conferences on on your writing experiences and so on. So did 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 you did you do any courses or did you j just take it up and and get on with it sort of thing? I think initially I just took it up and got on with it, but you soon tend to realise that if you really want to learn something and you really want to pick up the knowledge and be dedicated, then you must go to the classes. And I've been to various um, classes taken by some of the top authors like Graham Joyce and Peter James. Mm -hmm. And luckily for me, Peter James has always been there to help me. So you do have to go along to the classes, take the courses, and try to get as much as you can into that. And go to the, to the literary events. You know, Scarborough has a literary event, and... Um, Skipton and various places, and it's always good to go along and listen to the top authors to see how they do it. Yes, that's right, listen so you, to other yeah. people, because everybody always says they have different methods and some people have to sit with a pen and paper, don't they? And yes, they do, yeah. 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 I mean, I can't do that. I've 
I've said before that it, it's you've got to you've got to have this in your mind. You've got to be in the mood for it. And if you're not, the best thing to do is just switch off and walk away. Mm -hmm. Because you really will not turn out your best work. No, no. You've got to, so you've, you've got to be. In, have you got a better time of day than others? Because that's no. To be honest, um, it's just whether uh, it's just when the mood takes me. Sometimes that can be a morning. Sometimes it can be later on in night. It, it really is when you feel in that. I suppose I don't like to use the word, but in the zone. Mm. When you actually mm. feel like you really want to write, then make the most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, well, that sounds like good advice. How can, how can people access your, your, your new book, then, The Devil's Dozen? The Devil's Dozen, yeah, you can mm. buy it online. It's, it's available in Amazon Kindle and Kobo and Nook and all the digital versions. And it's also available to buy through the bookshops as a paperback or if you go to my website which is www.thelordofmisrule.net <laughs> uh, there are links from there straight to the publisher's website to buy it from there. Okay, oh that's wonderful. Hey, well, the very best of luck with it thank then, you. Ray. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. He was very interesting, wasn't he? Very good. Yeah, um, yeah. it's kind of, in, it started to make me think, hmm, Maybe it's kind of the way you talk. You think, well, maybe I could write a maybe book. It's you know? possible. Maybe yes. it's absolutely possible. Yes. Have, you, have you never written a book, Sarah? <gasps> no, I haven't. Funnily enough, <laughs> haven't you? Have you? Uh, no, no.